what are you looking at? I didn't say you guys could see that yet. Did I? Just quit looking. Ha. This was a pick yesterday. And I'm kind of excited about it because I have been wanting one of these tiny little four cycle overhead valve engines for about three years. But they cost over, uh, it's like 150 bucks if you buy just the motor. Why did I want it? Just because I wanted it. So I was making my rounds yesterday, going to the different flea markets and whatnot. And there was a sticker on this thing that said, Broken Edger, 18 bucks. Well, that's a heck of a lot cheaper than hundred and some dollars, 150 bucks for one of these motors. So this is one of those that has the press to start on it, where you can have the little battery pack and push it in there and it'll start it and it's a five point so I'm gonna grind myself a five point and just use a drill to start this thing but it still has pull start um, my biggest concern was if the motor was in decent shape and the only problem that this thing has is that the belt has either come off which I haven't checked yet the belt has either come off or the belt's broke well I'm not at all concerned about the belt being broke because I only want it for the motor. Uh, I went through it, cleaned everything out, new gas, changed the oil, yes, I did say changed the oil. See this yellow knob right here? It has a crankcase that you put oil in because it is a forward cycle. Now, don't be confused, they make four cycle engines that still run with two stroke oil and don't have a crankcase. Uh, in fact, um, come on brain, steel makes them. Uh, and I've got one, hang on, I don't remember where I carried it. This FS90R powerhead uh, for a weed eater is a four cycle. Has teeny tiny little push rods in it, but got that one running. I was excited to get this, but this was not that. One that takes oil and straight gas. No mixing. So, does it run? Now let's pull the cord and see. Pump like just to get that. I've been wanting a four cycle that runs straight gas like this for quite a while. Um, I don't know, I mean I don't have anything to edge here on my property. You know, I just turn the weed eater on its edge and, and do it that way. So more than likely I'm just going to take the motor off and the rest of it's going to go bye bye. Um, but I wanted to show it to you. It was something that I've been looking for it for three years. Never mentioned it. I don't think that I was wanting one, but now I got it, and I'm happy. I'm happy. What am I going to use it for? Who knows? I may come up. I might come up with a silly little project that this thing will actually operate. You never know when it comes to me. Um, now it's time for a very special thank you and a very special shout out to a good friend of mine, uh, Everett. Um, Road King, Road King 805 and his group, um, he gave me a shout out and I was at uh, 5,970 some subscribers in that area and he gave me a shout out and I haven't checked recently but this morning 
I was over 6,130 subscribers because of his shout out. So, Rody, buddy, thank you very, very, very much. That means a whole lot to me. I knew that you could use that tachometer, and I kept watching your videos of you using that little, uh, the, 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 the other old one, the one that I sent you is old, but the other old one where you only got your reading if it was in contact, and this new one, you'll be able to press that six second button, put it on the motor, it'll time that six seconds out, and then the needle stays where it's at so you can pull it away and look at it and see exactly what your RPMs are. That's a nice thing about a fine Swiss made timepiece like that. Uh, so you're very very welcome for that. I'm glad that you got your uh, valve grinder and that you're able to get that motor taken care of, the water cooled Briggs. Looking forward to that build as always. All of the builds. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I got. It is. I'm done. Psyched about getting this little four cycle engine. I'm going to pull it off of here. Don't know what I'll do with the rest. I might find something I can do with it. But at any rate, this is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. You got well, now I wish I had recorded on the other camera because now I got to wait all the time to edit. But anyway because I'm using the GoPro. See this right here? There's supposed to be a shaft. Guess what? No shaft. So it's good. I good thing that all I wanted was the motor because that's really all I'm getting. The shaft is gone. You can see down in the hole there. See? See how deep that is? There's supposed to be a shaft that comes out that works with this pulley and this is where the blade attaches and a nice grooved belt and the idler but yeah it's missing pieces so you know what I'm alright with that because my plans were to scavenge just the motor off this anyway so sometimes the plan works out eh alright that is it See you guys on the next one. I have just got to show you how small, tiny, and yes, even cute this little motor is. Let me give you a little bit of perspective. Let me move this drill out of the way. I'm going to set my Diet Coke down next to it. And that's a little Diet Coke. That's a 16.9 fluid ounce Diet Coke. Look how tiny. That's the whole thing. Isn't that just the cat's meow? I almost use this in a, in a remote controlled something or other. I got a mud dogger in there. But just, just awesome. I think. I think it's neat. Super, super neat. The uh, reason I took it all apart was to see what was going on with that shaft. And uh, there's nothing going on with the shaft. The shaft is splined five point, and it's fine. That's uh, just the way that it is. Nothing broke on the engine itself. So, anyway, neat, cute little bugger in it. Itty bitty. Now, it does, it comes apart like a two cycle would with the jug coming off of the piston and you pull your side cover off to get to your connecting rod and I'm sure that it's high speed bearings in there instead of uh, the larger engines. I'm not sure what the top RPM is on this little guy but I think it's awesome that it runs and the fact that it's only missing that shaft that's supposed to come out kind of makes that edger plausible to put back together since there is nothing broken on the engine but I'm not going to do that. You guys want to see the little rocker arms and push rods? Huh? Let's take a look at them. Ready? Yep. 
you guys are going to laugh when we pop this. It's a tiny little spark plug, too. Come on off of there, boot. Look at itty bitty spark plug. Let me get a real spark plug, put it up next. Well, a, a regular spark plug. and loose good the dust and everything off of it I'm gonna look first before I show you guys <laughs> so you want to see him neat and nifty ready here we go you see how big my hand is on this tiny little valve cover and there you are tiny little pins for push rods nifty I'm digging it I'm digging it it's worth the editing just to show this to you guys just how small this motor is pretty awesome O-R-E-S-O-M-E awesome alright well make sure I turn that backwards first to get it threaded in there right and gently Torque that valve cover down. Good enough. But itty itty bitty. Teeny teeny tiny little thing. And it's a mag fired uh, electronic ignition. Me. Alright. I'm going to oogle over it. You guys don't have to oogle over it anymore. I'll go ahead and stop this. This is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. I'll holler at you guys later. I'm out. And if you've made it this far to the end of the video, please consider clicking over here to subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, check out my last video. See you guys.